Hello, everybody. I'm still at VidCon. Some bonus content after doing my VidCon vlog. There's quite a few people coming to VidCon by themselves. Let's do something about traveling solo. Some great tips. Yeah, these don't just apply for your travel channel. If you have an event that you've always wanted to go to that's similar to what you're doing and it's not in your country, these tips can apply to you rather than having to struggle to find a lot of people to go with. I'm Cameron, I run Procrastinating Gameplay and Procrastinating Science. Procrastinating Gameplay, of course, is gameplay. Yes, everyone on YouTube does it. But Procrastinating Science, I do scientific videos of an educational nature from anything from injuries up to experiments you can do with young kids in schools and even at home. Worth checking out, I'm gonna add links to the description, but let's jump straight into it. Transition. Tip number one is always to carry a notepad on you. This is really helpful if you've never been to a city before. You can use the notepad without having to run the risk of running out your battery life. Then you have it then and there as a backup. When I travel to uh, conferences, I always book a hotel near the train station I'm going to be doing the uh, transfer from. The reason being is that the amount of times I've missed my flight mm. and being close to the main transport, a transfer location, train station or the main bus stop really, really helps. Um, I was actually in Iceland when this happened and I thought, oh, oh I'll just be able to wake up in the morning, walk for 20 minutes, half an hour to the transfer location. Turns out it didn't work out. I had to pay 200 pounds to get my flight. Before yeah, transfer. and if you're traveling alone, often sometimes it will be on a budget and you don't want to get stung with like Last 200 minute. pounds, you're up to the UK, that's fine. I know someone who missed the flight in Australia and had to pay two grand on the spot in order to get a flight home the same day. I'm sorry, two grand? Two grand on the spot. And that was literally the only available flight. She still had to wait another four hours and that was it, they said, we can't put you on anything else. Number three is, it's a really basic tip, but it's quite surprising, not a lot of people do this, is learn some phrases. I've been guilty myself, but learn some phrases in the language of the country you're going to. You don't need to be a savant with the language, but That's you right. need stuff like, right. where's the police station, basic directions. So if you have an allergy, learn how to say what your allergy is in that language, just in case there's been an attack. You know, you don't want to be struggling for the word to peanut when your airway's closing <laughs> off. Some places, it's not like where you might be used to them asking, do you have an allergy or something like that? And you have to state it. And if you state it in their language, then it's a case of, okay, they've got it and they can give you advice on it. Stuff like, where's the police station? If worse does come to worse and something does happen, knowing how to say, I need the police or I need the emergency services is another good one. And stuff like airport, train station, taxi, taxi rank, anything like that is great basic knowledge to have. Tip number four, really basic tip, but I uh, lose my stuff all the time. What I do with my passport, I actually put it inside a plastic wallet with Stuff like, if you find me, my net, uh, call this number, email on both sides. Well, I was actually in New York, and um, thankfully, people, somebody actually like, saw the, the plastic wallet, and uh, yeah, they actually dropped me a message. <laughs> That's also helpful, like, if, even if just the bag's found, it's a case of you can get a phone call, hey, I found this bag, there's nothing in it, what's it about? And yep. you'd know straight away, okay, I've lost my passport, someone has it but they've not left it in the bag yep. and you can do what you need to to find an embassy and get an emergency passport sorted. This is one that I personally stick to because I have been stung with this in the past. In your room, it's sort of, it's sort of two tips in one. Don't keep all your money on you ever. Like your money for the trip, either keep it, keep some of it in cash and keep some of it on an actual travel card but also don't keep it all together. Separate certain amounts around your room, not in the same place, hide them in a book, hide them in your passport, hide them in the bottom of your bag or even like a pair of socks. And unfortunately, even though people are vetted, it's either other guests or people with a temptation yep. could do that. And if you've got money hidden around, if you lose 40 euros, if you use $40, but your 400 plus, 500 plus is still there, yep. Yeah, you're going to be annoyed about it, but you're not going to be suddenly going, 
I need to get all my money. And it's also the same if you get pickpocketed. That's true. If that you've got true. it all in your wallet, they've got it all, including the card. They might not have a use for it, but you're not going to use it. That's true. So keep your cash separated in different places. So on the subject of accommodation, there's a real trick to finding the right accommodation when you travel solo. I tend to generally lean towards staying in hostels because I, I like the whole like meeting random strangers. So my main tip is whenever, whether it's Airbnb or hostel world, do check the reviews. There are certain, certain times where maybe in booking.com you may have the odd review which kind of looks fake and sneaking suspicion, especially who's reviewing it. So double check the, the quality of the review, whether it's a recent review and whether it actually applies to um, the right thing that you're looking at. These days, I look for um, a common area where I can hang out, just to meet other people. If you go to a hostel, there may not be a common area, there may not be a bar. You could be just stuck in an awkwardly you know, own little room and that's not so fun and it feels like a prison. Don't make yourself a target. If you're constantly looking at the map, instantly, tourist. Don't use back alleys unless it's a really short sort of, I'm on about like less than 100 feet. For me, it's a case of I'm a big bloke, people don't want the hassle of it. And I also keep a hand on my equipment, like the strap will be wrapped around my hand. Yep. So even if someone does grab it, it's a case of yoink, thank you. And if they kick off, well, you just tried to rob from me, mate, it's fair game. You can do a lot of stuff that, me that paints a massive target on your back, especially at night time. If there are areas that even the locals don't seem to go, do not yep. go. Because you asking for directions, checking a map, flaunting equipment, appear to not know where you're going, that's it. Bullshit it. If you're not sure, pick a direction that looks like it heads towards a crowded area and walk with purpose. Because then they'll either think you're local or you're meeting someone, in which case they'll often back off. I've only ever been pickpocketed once. And the thing about pickpockets is that they're opportunists. So whenever I go, uh, I generally am very good at knowing which pockets, pocket to hold what. My, they look for two things, your wallet and your mobile phone. I always keep my wallet quite stolen away somewhere and uh, my mobile in my right, uh, right pocket. So I can just like put my hands directly into my pocket and it's really hard to pickpocket. On this one odd occasion, I decided to put my mobile in my back pocket and the guy literally did a dance around me, tapped me on the shoulders and I thought, what's going on? And then I must admit, I was really, really impressed how he managed to go, go around, grab my phone and literally 20 meters down, walking down, I realized, shit, he's got my phone. Turn around, gone. So always know where you put your phone and your wallet in the I right keep, same places. I keep my phone and my wallet. You can actually see, I think, on the camera. That is my phone. These aren't tight pants, but the pockets are quite yep. grippy, so yep. they don't come out. I never keep anything in my back pockets when yes. traveling. Never keep anything in my coat pockets. I'll keep it on an inside pocket in my jacket, because even if you get the old, yep. oh, I'm sorry trick, if it's there, you either feel them go for it or they trap their own arm trying to get to it. Yep. And that's not their target. They're going for an outside pocket. Yeah, exactly. And Simple. it's a case of if someone lifts these, I'd immediately feel them starting to move. Yep. What do you think you're doing? Keep someone in contact. It could just be a text every day, but if you're traveling a big distance, for example, I will be texting a family member every day just to let them know. Not even like, hey, it's me checking in, just I'm at the convention, I've met my friend, we're having lunch. Just one message a day could alert them if something goes wrong. I'm not saying it will, but let's say you got you know, hit by a tuk-tuk. Yep. Or hit by, more likely in this area, a cyclist and you had to go into the hospital and your phone was damaged or something like that, if you give them a way to keep in touch with you, they can immediately ring, sort out your insurance, sort out other flights, something like that. If you're doing a big trip and if you keep checking in, this means, I'm not saying you're gonna get kidnapped, that's an extreme example, but yep. if you don't check in, maybe you're going hiking and you have a fall, yep. that immediately alerts them. When you text them again, okay, that's fine, he's just out of contact, but on oh, yep. second day, yep. third day, they will have a last point of reference to where you were mm -hmm. and can 
not direct the search, but can contact authorities in that area and say, yep. he's been missing for two days. It actually builds on uh, the point nicely of in social media is that if you, on Facebook, you take a picture, Joe tags the picture. So, you know, all, that, all those stupid times when people are doing selfies in different places, yeah, people actually makes sense. The airport actually does a lot of help where it's like, okay, he's at that airport, he's checked in at that hotel. It gives them a map. I mean, if you're, if you're going off grid, okay, fine might not be the tip for you, but if you're doing it and you're young or yep. you're doing it to prove that you can do it and you're vulnerable or you're doing it in a dangerous area, it helps keep a track of you. If something were to go wrong, not say it will, right. but it does help. I keep a digital copy of my passport, my insurance, all the really important documents because I can't trust myself with physical documents. I put it all in a Dropbox and I share that folder with a bunch of people I trust. So should I say, I have to call out people and go, right, I need a helping hand with my insurance, my passport, all the details. It's kept in an electronic folder that they can forward to me easily or to whatever emergency contact locally. Or even just read off the number. Sometimes that's all your insurance company needs. And if you've got a pen and pencil. Yeah. Remember that first tip? Pen and pencil. And that's it. Digital copy of your stuff in a shared folder somewhere electronically that you can send to people and they can send it back. And guys, I hope that's been useful. 10 tips for solo travel. If you have any other tips, do let me know actually, because I'm kind of looking to build more tips to help other people. My aim with this channel is to inform, inspire, and amuse through travel and music festival. If any of these tips you actually practice yourself and they have helped you out, let Joe know in the comments down below and give an example of how they've helped you. Yeah, Damn, you, you really, you've done this before. <laughs> I'd love to talk a bit more, but the bar is calling us. See you in the next video, and don't forget to check out this fine young man's channel. Eight, nine. Nine. <laughs> we, we do know how to count. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> okay, yeah, um, I don't, you're, you're next, right? Yeah, I'm next. I'm, I'm just we, we've gone completely off track. Yeah. <laughs> My brain's just let it go, it had it, and it just let it go. I don't know what I'm supposed to be saying now. Don't say filled in, because that just sounds wrong.